Hey everybody, welcome back to Checkpoint on Campus, another glorious episode coming to you from the voice of college esports. I am Norris Howard, joined alongside Jacob Brothers as usual. Jacob, what's going on, man? What's going on? We have some of our favorite esports to talk about today. I'm really excited because uh, the semester is back and there's actually states of play that we could get excited about again. And one of the biggest tournaments in the land it's going down. It starts this week. That's right. College League of Legends, or C-Law as we like to call it, is the biggest and most official League of Legends tournament at the college level. It's put on by Riot officially. So, Jacob, give us a little overview of the sort of uh, uh, format for those who may not be familiar. Yeah, so before playoffs, it's a six-week Swiss format, as we've come to like to see. Uh, teams mm -hmm. that are six and zero and five and one go to playoffs, which means you have to basically be perfect. Uh, Thirty-two schools are going to be in the playoffs, uh, so uh, the college championship bracket they're calling it, which qualify from the conference playoffs or selection by the college championship committee, which is kind of interesting. Um, mm -hmm. Scholarship pricing goes to the top sixteen schools, and then eight schools will be in like the finals event. Yeah, and, and again, you know, as Jacob said, this is part of the organization that we really love to see when it comes to college esports. But then again, mm -hmm. it's Riot. They pretty much have written the book on how to run esports events. And so let's take a look at some of these teams because a lot of these names are familiar. They're returning uh, once more to, to vie for the title. And let's start <clears throat> with the East bracket. Now, the East, obviously, there's hundreds of schools yeah. uh in in a lot of these uh divisions if you will but there are a few standout schools that we wanted to highlight so jacob let's start with this east division yeah kind of in every division you kind of see like the the big big expected school and then kind of the rest so like in the east we have hu storm which is you know notably one of the bigger teams in that region and then rochester ryerson and st Clair, which is in canada as we like to see yeah and you know i think the east is a is a bracket or the east is a conference that could surprise people i think there's mm -hmm. some quality teams coming out of the east but they are not the world beating conference um as, as some other ones may be obviously i believe that hu storm mm -hmm. will perform very well there's to I lose think so far potentially yeah it's theirs to lose it's theirs to lose but then we move to the north division which is like packed. good lord <laughs> i mean it is packed the north division includes maryville columbia wisconsin illinois illinois was laying michigan state northwood oakland ohio state and university of michigan i think out about out of all of those schools i believe all except for northwood who is in their one of their early if not their first this is their second go round uh of the sea law tournament Oakland University is new. Outside of that, almost all of these schools have made it to the final event of C Law, mm -hmm. uh, the final sort of playoff bracket of C Law before. These are all quality, quality teams and names you've seen before. Yeah, obviously, the biggest question there is Maryville. I think because I, I was thinking about this before we were going to talk about it, and the idea that popped into my head or the thought that I had is that. I think the major players now for Maryville are Maryville's coaches. Because obviously we had two big players go to LCS and they're doing good. And so now it's kind of up to the coaches to make sure that they stay on top. So yeah. we're curi I'm curious I to see what's going to happen with that. Absolutely, I agree. And another note about Maryville is that we remember way back in the fall of 2020, uh, Maryville and HU Storm at the Harrisburg Invitational both had their A and B teams mm -hmm. in the semifinals. And so we know that there is a sort of backlog of talent that Maryville has that they're going to be able to draw from. But you're right. It doesn't matter who's in those positions uh, many times because the coaching staff has been giving them the tools to succeed. Mm -hmm. And so I'm anticipating Maryville making a deep run into this tournament again simply because uh their coaching and back end is is so good uh now moving to the south uh obviously we got a few names that you are familiar with winthrop being one of them i know jacob one of your favorite uh, God bless winthrop. schools winthrop is very good lsu texas florida state and ut dallas now ut dallas is a team that we talk about often in mm -hmm. overwatch but they have made moves in uh league of legends and i'm excited to see uh what they can do but 
it's definitely going to be the Florida and Texas show, I think, when it comes to the South Division. One of the one of the winners will come from one of those states. Yeah, Winthrop needs to finally prove themselves, and UT Dallas needs to not choke. Those are kind of the, the sub-stories going into that that division. Absolutely. And uh, read off some of the schools we got coming from the West Division, because the West, obviously, a lot of people, that's where professional esports lives. But the West uh, has not necessarily walked away with the championships, mm -hmm. even though they also have some strong schools. So, Jacob, what are some of the schools coming out of the West? Yeah, we have Arizona State, and particularly UC Irvine's a very strong school in that division. Uh, Colorado Boulder, uh, Embry Riddle, Oregon, uh, Simon Fraser, and Washington. So for me, UC UCI is kind of the big school of that grouping of people, and it's 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 time for the West to prove itself. You're right. The Western schools have not done what they should be doing, and if it's going to be a Western school, it would be UCI. I think. I think so too. I think it's also um, look out for Embry Riddle. They've made some. They've made some good moves in the past. They're a school that uh, can show up, and also uh, Boise State is a school that we're going to be on the lookout for as well. But they are coming in from the Mountain West Conference. They're mm -hmm. not in the West official Sea uh, Law Conference. They're in one of the partner conferences, uh, which is in, which includes a lot of the pre-made college sports conferences like midwest esports mountain west big east acc stuff like mm. that uh so moving forward uh as we said states of play will begin on january 18th and run through february 28th and the playoffs will begin march 1st march so i'm super want. yeah i'm super I, excited I, saw for that this. I was like oh that's kind of cool <laughs> yeah I'm super excited for this. I think a lot of schools are going to be trying their best to knock uh, Maryville off their perch because they are mm -hmm. far and away the best school when it comes to League of Legends. But there's a lot of tough teams here. I mean, we still got Mizzou. We still got Grandview in the mix from the Midwest Esports Conference uh, and in Colorado State from Mountain West as well. I'm not necessarily saying those teams are on the same level, but these are <laughs> all teams who could be competitive is what I'm saying. Uh, and I'm excited to see what Northwood does. Northwood has made a massive investment into their esports program over the past year. We're seeing dividends in Overwatch. They've won championships in Rocket League. If that same uh, sort of energy can transfer into League of Legends as well, we may be looking at a, a shift of power. Uh, yeah, in, yeah in the com esports. competition is alive and well in this league, and you love to see that. That's what every esport should be. So, you know, you have the battle at the top and you have the battle in the middle. And that's what we're going to be seeing. And the battle on the top is probably going to be the most exciting it has been ever in CeeLo. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, like I said, and, oh, and also one thing is the Teemo Cup, which is a consolation yeah. tournament, sort of the the, the NIT of uh, CeeLo, <laughs> will also go uh, and take place March 8th. Uh, to April 11th. You can make sure you stay glued to all of our social medias. Follow us at On Campus Esports. That's on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, uh, where you can find all of the latest news in college esports.